In the second section of this lecture, we will talk about solar radiation. Solar radiation is an important and highly dynamic parameter. It controls the surface energy and water balance, and it affects the atmospheric, biophysical, and hydrologic processes. So it is very important for ecosystems, for agriculture, in architecture, and in many other areas. It also provides a source of renewable energy. But, as I mentioned, it is highly dynamic, so it is spatially and temporally variable. What controls these dynamics? First of all, it is controlled by orientation of Earth relative to Sun or we can say it in another words, that it is dependent on position of sun relative to given point on Earth. Another important parameter is topography. Depending on topography, especially on its slope and aspect, as well as shadowing, the solar radiation will change. Then another highly dynamic component that influences solar radiation are clouds and atmospheric properties. And a little bit more stable, but also influential, can be surrounding surface properties, such as land cover, and especially things like water or snow. So here are components of solar radiation. The, the most important component is direct radiation from sun. And this direct uh, radiation from sun is the largest component in most places. And here you can see in this image how it is influenced by topography. Topography here is this brown line. And you can see that along this brown line, the depending on the position of sun, we have certain locations that receive direct solar radiation, such as this one, or this one, or this one. And then there are locations that don't have any direct solar radiation coming from here. And that's due to self-shadow or due to cast shadow. So for example, this hill will be casting shadow here so this area won't get any direct solar radiation because of this cast shadow. Then another smaller component of solar radiation is diffuse radiation from sky, which represents smaller values, but it's more uniformly distributed coming from here and then it is reflected radiation and it is the smallest component except in the areas where we have water for example near ocean or in areas that are covered by snow there the reflected radiation can be pretty high so the first parameter that influences the dynamics of solar radiation is so sun position relative to Earth. And to compute the sun position, we need to provide certain parameters. And as we said, it really changes minute by minute. So we need to provide the date. It's usually provided as day number and time. And we need not only the, the time, but we also need the location on Earth. So that will uh, le usually given as latitude, longitude and latitude, and of course time zone. So that this time can be related to the, uh, properly to the time zone. And based on the time and location on Earth expressed through longitude and latitude, we can compute relative position of sun 
which is given by its azimuth, measured in horizontal plane, and solar altitude, measured as sun angle above horizon, also called inclination. Then based on the uh, uh, so sun position, we can compute sunrise time, that means the time when the sun uh, shows up above the horizon, and sunset time when the sun disappears after, uh, uh, below the horizon. So uh, we are computing here sun position for 22nd December. All these values reflect the values on December 22nd. And what would be the sun declination on this day? Declination is defined as angle between the solar beam and Earth equator. So 20, you can recall that December 22nd is winter solstice and during winter solstice the sun is 23 degrees south above the Tropic of Capricorn. And then the angle for sunset time and sunrise time also needs to be uh, corrected with atmospheric refraction correction where the inclination is greater than zero before sunrise. That means that we see the sun before it actually rises above the horizon and that's due to atmospheric refraction. Now, what is solar incidence angle? Solar incidence angle is the angle between the terrain normal, so between the topography, terrain normal essentially defines the, uh, the slope and orientation of the topography and solar beam. So angle between terrain normal and solar beam is called solar incidence angle. So here is how solar incidence angle, how the spatial distribution of solar incidence angle will look like for winter solstice, December 22nd, around 2 p.m. So as you can see, we need to define the day and time uh, when we uh, compute this solar incidence angle and, uh, uh, and you can see that it also depends on topography, on aspect, orientation of topography and also on its slope. And as I said, the solar incidence angle depends on time because it depends on the uh, position of sun. This was dynamic of solar incidence angle during winter, winter solstice for a small valley at 45 degrees latitude and you could see that the uh, that this valley never got any direct solar radiation and this is the same area during the summer so you can watch here how some of these areas due to cast shadows never get any sun during the winter during the summer the the entire area gets direct solar radiation, but it greatly varies during the day. Now, solar beam radiation for inclined, inclined plane, that means for a general topography, is function of solar incidence angle and we already talked about what solar incidence angle is then solar constant that converts the incidence angle to energy and a number of atmospheric factors and that's the link at turbidity factor which measures atmospheric turbidity uh, and the uh, atmospheric turbidity reduces the direct radiation due to aerosols, due to particles that are uh, in the air. 
Then also relative optical air mass and so-called Rayleigh optical thickness, essentially a thickness of clear atmosphere and the, the solar radiation, because it changes minute by minute, is usually computed as cumulative solar radiation for a certain time period. Either for daily, uh, we compute daily solar radiation, monthly solar radiation, seasonal, annual, based on the application. So for example, here we have these three components. This is the beam solar radiation, so it has the highest values. In this topography, it varies from 1,000 to almost 6,000 watts per square meter. Then we have diffuse radiation. Diffuse radiation is about one magnitude smaller. It's in hundreds of watts per square meter. And in this location, reflected radiation is even smaller, mostly because we don't have any highly reflected surface here. It's mostly vegetated, so the values are very small. And this is daily cumulative solar radiation computed with half an hour time step. And for day 356, which is winter solstice, that's the 22nd December. Now, this is how the total beam solar radiation would look like for two different days. So this is for summer. And you can see that during the summer, the direct total beam solar radiation for this day is between 8,100, 8,200. While in the winter, it's quite different, it's much lower. And uh, in most of this area, it's about 3,000 watt per square meter. So you can see that there are quite significant differences between solar, direct solar radiation in summer and in winter. And this, of course, would influence greatly uh, management of uh, solar energy. We may have surplus of solar energy during the summer, but not enough of it during the winter when other resources will be needed. Then here we have solar radiation duration. That means how many hours was there solar uh, radiation available? Uh, and again, you can see that the, the differences between the uh, summer solstice and winter solstice are quite significant. Uh, during the summer, it's 14 hours of solar radiation, and uh, during the winter, it's hardly it's less than nine hours. But as I said, we can compute this cumulative solar radiation for different time periods. Here you can see the animation that shows the cu monthly cumulative solar radiation for a small town, including the surrounding topography. And you can see the big differences between summer and winter. And also you can see that the simulation includes the influence of cast shadows and, uh, and the uh, impact of cast shadows also changes quite dramatically throughout the year. It is minimal during the summer, but it influences the neighboring building or it extends all the way to neighboring buildings during the winter. So it can have quite substantial impacts. Uh, so in the cities, it is really important to take into account the uh, cast shadows. Uh, from the buildings. You can see that these higher buildings really cast shadows over these smaller homes. And then what we can do, we can uh, assume that we can put solar panels on top of the buildings and we can compute the amount of solar energy that each building can produce based on the size of it. Uh, uh, of its roof and also based on its orientation and location uh, in relation to topography. 
So here is a, again a simulation that shows the pho pho uh, photovoltaic energy potential in urban area for each building as it changes throughout the year. And again, you can see that the changes between summer and winter are, are quite significant. Now here you can see how the uh, here you can see it in a graph for certain location the contributions of different components of the solar radiation. Uh, this is total. The red line is the total uh, radiation. The yellow line is the direct beam radiation, and uh, this um, purple line is the diffuse radiation. So again, the direct radiation is the most important, but the diffuse radiation uh, and, uh, can't be neglected. And these points essentially show the me actual measured solar radiation. So you can see that the model predicts it pretty well. Then there is a couple of very interesting uh, online resources regarding the solar energy. One of the most comprehensive ones is the photovoltaic web GIS, where GRASS was used for computation of some of the uh, so solar energy parameters, especially the solar radiation and influence of clouds and other parameters. And on this, on this website, you can click on any location and you can compute for a given type of uh, photovoltaic technology the amount of energy that will be produced for each month, for each day, the averages and all kinds of different, different parameters. And this is available for entire Europe and for most of Africa. And it was, it was developed uh, in Italy in the European uh, Union uh, Research Center. Then there are other resources. Uh, National Renewable Energy Resources Laboratory uh, provides also a solar car calculator, but it's not, uh, not as detailed uh, in terms of spatial data as the European one. And, uh, but it uh, has more different types of technologies and the, uh, the, this one is uh, based on measured data rather than on uh, highly detailed uh, computations. But you can, you can find the, uh, both solar and wind, wind energy potential on this website. So this is all about solar energy and here are some references and some uh, uh, some links to material that you can use to uh, to further um, learn more about this topic.